buried deep within a limestone cave in Brazil, a face gazes upward, or rather what remains of it. The skull, carefully severed and flesh-stripped nine thousand years ago, was buried with its own severed hands placed across its visage in opposite directions. Why? What sacred memory or terror did this act encode? However, the scene was not one of brutality, but ritual. The arrangement was deliberate, respectful, even reverent. But behind this act, there lingers a question that pulses like a heartbeat through the archaeology of South America. Who were these people, and where did they go? This is not just the story of a beheaded man. It is the story of Lagoa Santa, the ancient burial ground in Brazil, of mysterious migrations and disappearing lineages, of skulls, heavy, long-headed, thick-boned, found thousands of miles away in Argentina and Uruguay, of genetic whispers preserved in teeth and bone. Even anthropologists who are used to excavating human remains find this latest discovery particularly gruesome. Scientists believe they have discovered the oldest known case of ritual beheading in the Americas. The 9,000-year-old decapitated skull was discovered with a pair of amputated hands placed in opposite directions over the face and cut marks indicating that the flesh was removed. Researchers believe the decapitated head may hold clues to the origins of these practices that spread throughout South America. The Tupinamba of Brazil, for example, were well known for collecting heads as war trophies, whereas the Arara Indians used defeated enemies' heads as musical instruments. Anthropologists discovered the disembodied skull and jaw, as well as the first six cervical vertebrae and two severed hands, in a pit just beneath the cave's surface. They were covered with limestone slabs, indicating that they had been carefully buried. The hands had been severed from the rest of the body and placed palm side down over the face, the left hand pointing upwards on the right side and the right hand pointing downwards on the left side. The chemical analysis of strontium isotopes performed in this study indicates that the decapitated individual was not an outsider to the group. As a result, it was most likely a community member rather than a defeated enemy. The arrangement of the remains differed dramatically from other burials discovered in the Lagoa Santa area, which were relatively simple. The skull from Burial 26 shared traits with others found in Lagoa Santa. These people were dolicocephalic, long-headed, with low foreheads and robust facial bones. Their cranial capacity was large, often exceeding 1,350 to 1,400 cubic centimetres, and they bore strong brow ridges and thick mandibles. It was a type echoed in other parts of early South America, one distinct from later Andean or Amazonian peoples, who trended more toward brachycephaly and gracile features. Genetic studies confirm this difference. Ancient DNA from Lagoa Santa individuals, such as Sumidoro V, clusters with early North American lineages like Anzic I from Montana and USR I from Alaska. They were part of a founding wave, one that hugged the Atlantic coast rather than winding through the Andes. And they didn't vanish, not entirely. The Lagoa Santa remains were first discovered by Danish naturalist Peter Wilhelm Lund in the 19th century. Lund began his excavations in the Lagoa Santa region in 1835, focusing on the area's karst landscape, which is rich in caves and limestone formations. In 1843, during a severe drought, he made a significant discovery in the Sumiduro cave. The fossilized skulls and bones of 30 humans, alongside the remains of extinct megafauna, including mastodons and ground sloths. These findings were groundbreaking because they suggested that humans coexisted with megafauna in South America, a hypothesis that sparked much debate among 19th century scholars. The Sumiduro cave became a focal point for these discoveries. The term Lagoa Santa came to refer to these early human inhabitants, whose remains date back to around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, placing them in the early Holocene period. The study of Lagoa Santa has evolved with advances in genetic and forensic techniques. Early interpretations suggested Australo-Melanesian ancestry. More recent genetic analyses indicate that the Lagoa Santa population was predominantly Amerindian, but with around 3% Australo-Melanesian ancestry. Researchers found strong Australasian, Australia and Papua New Guinea genetic signals in the ancient genome from Brazil. 
There is an entire Pacific Ocean between Australasia and the Americas, and we still don't know how these ancestral genomic signals appeared in Central and South America without leaving traces in North America. A 2018 study found that the genome of most of the Lagoa Santa individuals is 100% Amerindian, with only one individual showing a 3% contribution from an Australo-Melanesian population. In 2022, a genomic breakthrough rewrote the map of South America's ancient past. Researchers sequenced the genomes of two individuals from northeast Brazil, known as Brazil 2 and Brazil 12, and two from Uruguay, known as CH13 and CH19b. Together with previously sequenced Sumiduro 5 from Lagoa Santa, their DNA formed a genetic fingerprint that pointed in a surprising direction. Maximum likelihood trees analyses grouped these individuals into a unique clade, separate from ancient Pacific coastal populations and Amazonian peoples. Brazil 2 and Sumidoro 5 shared a direct ancestral link. Brazil 2 in turn was an ancestor to both the Uruguay and Panama individuals. The first whole genome sequences of the ancient people of Uruguay offer a genetic snapshot of the region's indigenous populations prior to European military campaigns that decimated them. The indigenous people of ancient Uruguay have a unique ancestry not found in South America. This contributes to the idea of South America being a place where multi-regional diversity existed instead of the monolithic idea of a single Native American race across North and South America. The analysis used DNA samples from a man dating back 800 years and a woman dating back 1500 years, both predating Christopher Columbus's 1492 arrival in the Americas. The analyses revealed a surprising connection to ancient individuals from Panama, the land bridge connecting North and South America, and Eastern Brazil, but not modern Amazonians. Archaeologists have proposed two separate migrations into South America, one leading to Amazonian populations and the other to populations along the East Coast. These findings support this theory. DNA now provides genetic evidence that this theory may be correct, which runs counter to the theory of a single migration that split at the foot of the Andes. Archaeological evidence of human settlement in Uruguay dates back over 10,000 years. This suggests a bi-directional migration flowing along the Atlantic coast, connecting Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, and Central America. The genetic sample known as CH19B from Uruguay showed the clearest genetic ties to this Atlantic clade. Even more astonishing, both CH19B and PAPV173 from Panama harbored greater Denisovan than Neanderthal ancestry, hinting at deep archaic roots. It is remarkable that Denisovan ancestry has spread to South America. The admixture likely occurred over 40,000 years ago. The presence of the Denisovan lineage in the 1,500-year-old CH19B individual from Uruguay, not far from Buenos Aires, indicates a significant admixture between humans and Denisovans. The Querendi Indians were the dominant indigenous group in the Buenos Aires area at the time of Spanish arrival in the early 1500s. They were a nomadic, hunter-gatherer people who inhabited the Argentine Pampas, a vast plain that includes what is now Buenos Aires. Their lifestyle was adapted to the flat, fertile grasslands of the Pampas, and they were known for their resistance to Spanish colonization. The Querandí were involved in early conflicts with Spanish settlers, such as the attack on the first settlement of Buenos Aires in 1536, which led to its temporary abandonment. The Querandí set fire to the settlement, burning the rudimentary wooden and straw structures the Spanish had built. The Querandí's assault was not a single event, but part of a broader siege, as they continued to harass the settlers, cutting off their access to food and water. Around 350 years later, in 1889, 12 miles from the town of Arrecifes, on the Arrecifes River, near the Arroyo de Merlo in Buenos Aires province, a skull was found. It was buried in the pale lowest of the pampas, encrusted with calcareous sediments. The discoverers called it the skull of Arrecifes. The Arrecifes skull is notably characterized by its thick cranial bones, with measurements ranging between 10 to 12 millimeters, which is significantly thicker than the average human cranial bone thickness of approximately 6 millimeters. 
This pronounced thickness has been a subject of interest and study among anthropologists. It, too, was long-headed, with brow ridges like silent sentinels over the eyes. With a cranial index around 75.8, its estimated cranial capacity, depending on method, ranged between 1340 and 1480 cubic centimeters, placing it squarely in the robust, large-brained category shared by other ancient South Americans. Detailed anthropometric analysis noted the skull's dolicocephalic proportions, pronounced occipital torus, and deeply weathered surfaces covered in a carbonate crust. The sound it made when tapped, like fired clay, suggested intense mineralization, and its facial features aligned it with what is called the hipsy dolicocephalic type, elongated, heavy-browed, unmodified. Most remarkably, the Arasif skull shows no signs of artificial deformation and belongs to a type believed extinct by the time of European arrival. Yet it was dated to just before that moment, circa 500 years ago. It is very robust, indicating possible Neanderthal or Denisovan ancestry as well. In 1907, German scientists Dr. Lehmann Nietzsche described the Arasif skull as a thick-walled, brown, stained human cranium with pronounced brow ridges and a strong occipital torus. By the time Alice Hudlitschka examined it in 1910, he noted its robustness and lack of truly primitive features, though its fossil appearance and geological context remained ambiguous. Hudlitschka thought the skull not very ancient maybe only a few hundred years old. Descriptions by Hudlitschka of the Smithsonian in 1910 emphasized its fossil-like appearance, noting its light-colored calcified surface and darker inner bone. The mandible was missing, but the cranial vault alone revealed a pattern of anatomical robustness that did not match colonial or modern populations. After this, the Arasif skull mysteriously vanished from the scientific record. It has not been re-examined, photographed, or even mentioned again in any anthropological discourse. Could this individual have been one of the last genetic echoes of the original Atlantic coastal population? Given the morphology of the Arasif skull, its cranial index, brow ridge, thick vault, and absence of deformation, it is reasonable to hypothesize that this individual shared a similar genetic profile. Though the Arasif skull has not yielded DNA, its anatomical affinities place it firmly within the Atlantic coastal dolicocephalic tradition. The presence of this morphology as late as the 15th century suggests a genetic continuity that persisted for thousands of years, a lineage that had survived long after the peak of the Lagoa Santa population, enduring in pockets across the Argentine pampas. So, what do we make of the Arasif's skull, then? If the Lagoa Santa burials represent the beginning, then Arasif's skull might be part of the end, the final generations before everything changed. Before Spanish boots and steel tore through the southern cone, the cranial shape, the thickness, the robustness, the absence of artificial modification, these are all physical signatures of an ancient lineage. Population modeling suggests the Arasif's man could have descended from the very same wave as Sumiduro V and Brazil II, a man genetically aligned with CH19B of Uruguay, the Atlantic Echo. Perhaps the Arasif's man was a descendant of those buried in the Lagoa Santa Caves. Perhaps his people still told stories of skulls buried with hands over their faces. Perhaps the rituals had changed or disappeared entirely, but the bone remembered. And so did the genes. Although mass burials were found in sites in northeast Brazil, Uruguay, southeast Brazil and Panama, there is no additional archaeological evidence to support this theory. They all had cultural characteristics in common. The analyzed ancient individuals from southeast Brazil are approximately 9,000 years older than those from northeast Brazil, Uruguay and Panama, indicating significant cultural differences. Genetic samples northeast Brazil, Uruguay, and Panama share similar ages, but are located thousands of males apart. Nonetheless, the native people of Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina were not lost. They were layered into the soil, pressed into the silence of sediment, and inscribed into the chromosomes of their descendants. But when we dig, we do not simply find the dead. We uncover a language of ancestry, one written in ritual, in morphology, and in mutation. 
Thank you for watching and commenting. Please subscribe to the channel for updates.